Ate Baby, uh, meron po ba tayong mga kasamang bago? Um, I see si Ate, si Ate Salvacion Torres. Ate Salvacion, can you kindly introduce yourself to us? Konting uh, tell us a little something about yourself lang po. Unmute lang. I'm Salvacion Torres. Uh, nakatira po dito sa Dahlia Fairview. Uh, representative po ng BSA community. Thank you, Ate. Thank you po. Welcome. Welcome, Ate. Ano po itatawag ka sa iyo? Welcome po. Ate Sally. Sally? Sally. Ah, Sally. Oo. Ah, uh, sino po si Cheryl's iPhone? Ako po si Ate. Ay po. I'm Cheryl Rojas po. Ah. Friend ni Ate Gladys. Ah, okay. Sa Street no Hotel po. Street no Tama po. Opo. Oo. Hi, hi. Good evening. Po. Good evening, Sis Cheryl. You're from Feast Nova Tel po pala. Yes po. But Dati po are you here in Manila? Manila? Po? Are you here in Manila or in Bataan? Ah, uh, nasa Antipolo po. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, brother Jerome. Po. And then we also have Ate Elena Corosa and Bless. Bless po yung youngest namin. Sinama ko po siya ngayon. Wow. How oh, old are you, Iha? 11 po. Wow. We have, you are oh, the welcome. youngest. Wow. Very good. Welcome. Welcome. Mm -mm, welcome. I hope you will enjoy <laughs> yes. our session tonight. Yes. Good, good, good evening po. Okay. Kuya Harold. I see Kura, Kuya Harold Pagyo. Good evening, Kuya. Kuya Harold, good evening. Please introduce yourself. Walang audio, Kuya. Man, uh, uh, magandang gabi po. Uh, naririnig na po ako. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, ako po si Harold Pagyo, kapatid po ako ni Maria Cristina Sumayden. Uh, she, in, uh, she invited me. Uh, dito actually, in-invite po kaming uh, sa magkakapatid. And uh, I am thinking na nandito na po yung dalawa ko pang kapatid. But, uh, <laughs> so good evening po. Uh, I am uh, from Abu Dhabi. So currently, nandito po kami sa Abu Dhabi. Wow! wow. Welcome, welcome, Kuya Thank Harold. Thank you for joining Salam us, Kuya Harold. Thank you for joining us. Anong oras Salam po dyan ngayon? Uh, currently, alas stress pa lang po ng hapon. 3.15. Ah, okay. Oh, at least, okay. ano, naklak in the afternoon. Yes. Apo. yes. Thank wow. you for joining us, Kuya. I think, welcome. Kuya Nick, that's about it. Baka, eh, okay po. Pupasok pa later. Okay po. Thank you, Ate, for... Uh, facilitating that. Uh, okay. Ready down for May mga international pa po dito, si Kuya Keith and Roberts. Yeah, right. Hi, Kuya Roberts. Hi, Kuya Keith. Hi. Saka po sa work, Roberts? Wala, alas 5 pa lang dito. Alas 5. Ah, alas 5 pa lang. Ang maga. <laughs> Nag-coffee ka na. <laughs> Hindi pa. Maya-maya po. <laughs> Pag-ising, pag-ising. So, nagkaroon lang ng konting ano dito sa PowerPoint. Ang galig naman ng ating BTS, no? International. It doesn't oh. matter kung anong oras siya nila nando doon. Pwede ba nating ano, uh, sabihin intergenerational? 
Pwede rin. Intergenerational. Oh. Intergenerational. International. Ano, first, second, at saka third generation. Ganon. Oo. Oh. Dahanda ka magsalita. Bubusi na ka muna, ha? <laughs> gumante, gumante. Ayan na po. Sabi. Oh, pinagtatawan tayo niya at Carmen, intergenerational daw. Ayan. Kuya Nick, oh. may skandalo si Sister Immaculate sa, sa, sa picture mo. Ay, painter who yan. That is painter a work. Yan. That's just a work of art. You know? Ayun, okay. Okay. Ang gumuhit yan. Work ako na iskandalay si sister eh. <laughs> Still chocolate. Hindi. <laughs> so, welcome ulit sa ating uh, session. Uh, we thought of uh, coming up with objectives para uh, ma-sync natin lahat yung ating focus doon sa ano yung gusto natin ma-achieve tonight, no? Uh, number one, we to help us know God and ourselves. Tapos, uh, that is understanding why we are here. No? Uh, marami kasing uh, time na for some of us or to may mga kakilala tayo na wala silang mga moral compass no? na, na pwedeng gamitin. So, ma maaaring dito sa ating ginagawa ngayon ay isa sa mga ma-achieve natin po. And then secondly, to help us know how to make choices and trust and trust God even when this is difficult. Makikita natin yan doon sa kwentong maririnig natin tonight. No? To help us know God. Okay. And then, uh, napadalan ko kayo nito. No? Uh, gusto ko lamang maintindihan ninyo kung ano ito. So, sa taas, nakikita ba ninyo itong araw ko na minumu? Yes? Okay. So, sa part na ito ay uh, ito yung mga 12 periods nitong ating natawag na Bible Timeline Chart. No? And then dito rin sa baba ay may mga narrative books. So ito yung mga references natin sa Bible. No? And then uh, there will be supplemental readings or mga books na supporting yung main narrative natin. And dito yung may mga bilog-bilog uh, ito yung mga makikita nating uh, family plan ni God. No? So the premises are, are also here. At which part of the Bible ay binibigay ng Diyos yung mga premises niya. No? At uh, alam natin yung uh, uh, we, we trust God. That's why we, we also believe dun sa kanyang mga promise. And then yung the other dito, i-discuss namin later on as we progress dun sa ating uh, kwento. Meantime, itong part na to ang uh, tignan ninyo mabuti dun sa inyong uh, Bible timeline chart. Tapos gusto ko rin i-gamitin ninyo. No? As some of you may have the, uh, yung gusto isulat lahat. No? Yung mga naririnig or mga napapag-usapan. So yung pinadala kong workbook sa inyo ay meron siyang session talks no or talk notes no all you have to do is uh open it sa pdf no and uh, sa pdf may mga tools no and makikita ninyo uh, you can use yung highlight tools or you can uh, use the add text tool alin ba dito yon ayun yon no so may uh, parang uh, font ang nakalagay diyan pag pinindito niyo yon pwede niyo ilagay dito somewhere and then you can type yung mga notes ninyo dun sa PDF. Alright? Para hindi na kayo. And yung flow ng discussion ay nandito lahat dun sa talks na yan. So you don't need to take down all those yung mga, uh, mga notes. But siguro yung inote ninyo yung you think na makatutulong sa inyo. Alright? So, uh, studying the Bible uh, is not... Uh, a simple task. Yan ang isa sa mga binanggit natin doon sa uh, last uh, uh, session natin with Kuya Rene. No? And then also doon sa mga narinig natin during the plenary. 
na and the meaning of a particular verse or passage can be challenging to understand and even more challenging no sabi nga in to put it into practice now the good news is uh, though um para medyo meron tayong ganung classing uh, karamdam we believe that uh, and we trust the holy spirit and follow the guidance of the church uh kaya tayo gumagamit nung ating uh, catechism of the Catholic Church. No? Uh, and we do not need to be fearful of making mistakes in interpreting the scripture. No? So the Bible is a treasure of wisdom. And uh, paniwalaan natin that uh, it will change our lives. No? And it will fill us with truth. No? Na maraming, marami sa mga natutunan natin in the past. So, si Christine, ay, uh, eh? I- Ipa, ipa gagawin niyang mas tama. No? And Jesus speaks to us personally in this study. So, be not afraid. No? Huwag tayo matakot. And we believe that uh, uh, God will be with us. Alright? So, eto na po tayo. Uh, kung may mga, yung mga wala PDF, you can make use of your notes, notebooks and pens. Welcome back to our study. This is session two, the early world part one. We're going to take a look at Genesis chapter one through three and begin our adventure with one another and uh, along with God in this incredible story. But let's begin in prayer and ask the Lord to continue to bless us and to uh, help us in understanding his marvelous plan. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, as we begin this study, We come from so many different backgrounds, those of us here, those watching the DVD. Lord, we are in desperate need of your help. We need your plan. And so, Lord, we submit to you at the beginning of this study, and we ask you to teach us and direct us. We thank you, Lord, for helping to disclose in our heart our neediness and just how available you are to us. Thank you for being with us along this wonderful study of your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here we are. We're going to begin Genesis 1 through 3. And as we begin Genesis 1 through 3, it's important to point out that Genesis 1 through 3 is part of Genesis 1 through 11. We call the early world on the Bible timeline chart. It's turquoise. It's the color of earth viewed from space It should remind you of creation. These first 11 chapters of Genesis, which we're going to look at the first three today, are unique. It's a unique type of literature. And oftentimes people misunderstand when they read Genesis 1 through 3. Uh, Oftentimes people read this as a very familiar story of creation, and they dismiss it as as simply a a children's story or, or some kind of childish presentation of the beginning of the world or they call it myth, something that's just completely made up. And this often results when we read the text in a literalistic or a scientific manner. And when we approach the text in a a straightforward, linear manner, we too often miss the theological meaning because we fail to read it for what it really is. The first 11 chapters of Genesis are poetry. It's poetry. It's Hebrew poetry, and we have to approach it as Hebrew poetry. It says in the Catechism in paragraph 390, something that's really important to to remember as we read these first 11 chapters, particularly chapter 3 when we talk about the fall of Adam and Eve. It says, and I quote, The account of the fall in Genesis 3 uses figurative language, but affirms a primeval event a deed that took place at the beginning of the history of man. Revelation gives us the certainty of faith that the whole of human history is marked by the original fault freely committed by our first parents. And so the Catechism tells us that this is figurative language used in the first 11 chapters. 
But what the, the major mistake that people make so often is that they are more interested in the how rather than the why. And the Hebrew poetry reveals to us the why. Why did God create? Why did he tell us these stories in the beginning of the Bible? The creation story uses a symbolic language to reveal profound truths about God and about the origins of humanity. And this does not mean that it's fictional, that it's just made up. It's telling you real primeval events, but it's using figurative language in poetry. It's kind of interesting because the many people who read it call it, call it myth, but, but what this telling of creation actually is, if you understand it as Hebrew poetry, is anti-myth. It's actually anti-myth, and when you really understand it, it's debunking many of the, the stories that were being passed around or the myths that were being passed around about the beginning of the world, and there, there were an, an awful lot of them. The most famous creation account of Israel's Near Eastern neighbors is the Enuma Elish from ancient Mesopotamia. In this account of creation, many gods are struggling for power. They're all struggling for power, but Marduk, an upstart god who wants to be the top god, rips apart Tiamat, the current god queen. Marduk makes the heavens from one half of her dead body and the earth from the other half and then enslaves the remaining minor gods. When they complain, Marduk kills another god and uses his blood to create humanity so he will have a new source of manual labor. Now if we compare the biblical creation account to the Enuma Elish, we see just how different these accounts are. In stark contrast to the ancient Near Eastern creation myths and pantheons in which the gods are identified with nature, and the universe in Genesis, it is clear that God is above, he is above and he is over creation. Genesis creation story runs against the grain, against the grain of its rival pagan narratives. But if you don't understand that, you will lump it in with just pagan narratives, which it's not. And this is perhaps best seen in the creation of humanity. And I want to go through this to set the stage before we jump into verse 1. Mankind is created in the image and likeness of God in the creation story. And that is key to understanding and interpreting the text. This insight reveals how the Hebrew story is subtly subverting the classical story of Near Eastern kingship on two levels. On two levels. First, the creation account subverts other myths of the time by saying that God alone is king. God alone is king. Earthly kings may claim authority, and earthly kings may set up their images uh, in lifeless statues throughout their kingdoms, but the true Lord of the world has created man and woman, living, breathing, loving beings, in his image. So whereas the other gods, the false gods, create lifeless images and place them around the land, God creates living, breathing, loving creatures who are created in his image in likeness. He's above, he's above creation. Second, rather than reserving divine adoption and the noble dignity of being in the image and likeness of the gods just for kings, which many of the cultures uh, thought of, their, thought of the, the kings as really the noble ones, the Hebrew God bestows this on the first man and woman, and thus upon all humanity. This is one of the most astonishing elements of the story, and you can only appreciate it as it's in, uh, juxtaposed uh, with these other creation stories that were floating around. God desires to relate to his creatures not as a master to a slave, but as a father to sons and daughters. My friends, that is what makes our story from here on out radically different. Radically different. So if anybody ever says to you, oh, that's just a bunch of myths and it's just a kind of a, you know, um, a hybrid of other, other stories, you can say, no, it's not myth, it is anti-myth. And it subverts these other stories. Well, let's look into the scriptures and let's start with these first three chapters and see what 
happens at the very beginning. We're going to start right at verse 1, chapter 1, and uh, verse 2. Chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and this will provide for us kind of the guide for creation. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. When you first read the creation story, and by the way, there's two, and you probably figured that out, when you first read it, it seems so simplistic, but you have to ask not how, but why. Why is God telling us this? What is he trying to get across to us? And I would submit to you that God is getting across to us that he is responsible for creation. He's bringing form. He's preparing a habitat for us to dwell in. You see the same language later used in the Bible to build the tabernacle and the temple. God is building a, building a dwelling place where he can dwell with us. And the key to understanding creation, it's very simple actually, are two words, the words form and void. The earth was, with, was without form, it was formless, and there was a void, nothing filling it. So what you see in the first six days of creation is a division between form and void. The first three days of creation deals with the formlessness. So, for example, in day one, God separates the light from the darkness. He separates the light from the darkness. In other words, he creates time. Someone asked a question one time, what did God do before he created the world? And the answer, nothing. He didn't have any time. So God creates time on the very first day. And by the way, for those of you that are literalists in reading the Bible, verse 2 already derails you. And the reason is simple. God has just separated the light from the darkness, but we are missing something. It is not until day 4 that he creates the sun. So even though there is a shift from day to night, from dark to light, it is not necessarily happening in a 24-hour period. So you can see, this is Hebrew poetry. God is going to show us something here. He's dealing with the formlessness. And then on day two, what does he do? He separates waters from the waters. He said, let the firmament in the midst of the waters, let, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. He creates space. So you have time, you have space, and then on the third day, he creates land. So on the first three days, we have this, this creation of, of uh, time and space and land. And then on the days four, five, and six, he's going to fill the void. So on day four, he fills the void up in the heavens by creating the sun, the moon, and the stars on day four. And then day five, he creates, he creates something that fills the void in the sea and the sky. That's the fish and the birds. It's very easy. It's very simple, actually. And then on day six, he creates the beasts of the field, the, the land animals. So you, you have there uh, something very, very uh, simple, yet very easily understood. And that is that God is the one who created out of, the, out of the chaos, if you will, he created the cosmos. And he spoke it, ex nihilo, out of nothing, into being. And he dealt with the formlessness, and he dealt with, uh, with the void. But then something else happens on day six. On day six, not only does he create the beasts of the field, like the pigs and giraffes and the aardvarks and so forth, but he creates man. He creates the human being, Adam. So on day six, God creates Adam. And that begs the question, though, what's the difference between Adam and the animals? And why are we created on day six? How come we didn't get our own day, like the sun, the moon, and the stars? The fish got their own day along with the birds. They had to share with the birds. That's not too bad. But why are we sharing this with beasts? What is it about the, the sixth day? And, and how are we different than the animals? Chapter 1 and verse 26 is very clear in how we are different. We are created in the image and likeness of God. That's how we're different. 
We're created in the image and likeness of God. So what does that mean to be created in the image and likeness of God? Well, the church teaches us that to be created in the image and likeness of God means that, we, number one, we have an intellect. We can reason. We have an intellect. And that's a very powerful thing to have an intellect, to be able to reason through situations, to be able to reason when faced with various situations and data. So we have an intellect, reason, but we also have the second part, it's different than the animals, a will. We have a will. We can make decisions and act on, on, on good reasoning. So we have a will. Now before the fall, the intellect governed the will, and the will followed wisdom. But there's a third aspect of being created in the image and likeness of God that I think that we need to introduce here that's very, very important. And John Paul II uh, certainly commented on this many times, and that is that we have the capacity to love. We have the capacity to love. As John Paul II said, he said, it has been said in a beautiful and profound way that our God in his deepest mystery is not a solitude but a family since he has in himself fatherhood, sonship, and the essence of the family, which is love. And we know from the New Testament, because we have an opportunity to study a little bit ahead of ourselves, that God is love. God is love. And so we're created in the image and likeness of God. We have an intellect, and we have a will, and we have the capacity to love, to pour ourselves out and to give ourselves to other people. And we learn one other thing, too, in chapter 1 and also in chapter 2, and that is that we, as humans, have dominion. We have dominion over the fish and the birds and the beasts. We have dominion over them. And we, we pick that up by the fact that they named the animals. It's another way of saying they have dominion. Just like you, if you had children, who named them? You know, in all these years of teaching, nobody has ever come up to me and said, uh, Mr. Cavins, uh, we're going to have a baby in two weeks, and we decided you'll name it. I'm not going to name your baby. But why? I don't have dominion. <laughs> I don't have authority over your baby. That's your baby, your responsibility. You name it. You name it. And that's what Adam did, is he named all the animals. And he was naked, he was unashamed. But then, then we realize something very special, and that is this. That there are two creation stories. Two creation stories. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. But the two creation stories bring out a really important point. In the second creation story, we notice something different than the first creation story. In the first creation story, there's a common theme in that it is good. In fact, it's very good, everything that's mentioned in that creation story. It's very, very good. And then you come to the second creation story, and there's a change. There's a problem. Something isn't good. In fact, it's bad. And you know what that bad is? It's not good to be alone. It's not good to be alone. And so God fashions a woman from the rib of the man. He, man goes into a, Adam goes into a deep sleep. God takes a rib from his side, builds a woman from Adam, and brings the, the woman to Adam. And you can imagine what his response was, that great famous Hebrew word, la la. Okay? <laughs> now you, <laughs> you probably know that's not a Hebrew word. But I'm sure that he saw her and he realized, wow, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, he now has a partner. And God brought them together in marriage. He brought them together in marriage. And so God is the author of marriage. You'll even notice that they didn't date. God just brought them together as husband and wife, and the two cleave to one another and become one. Now, back to this two complementary creation stories for a moment. That's problematic for some people. You know, they'll read it and they'll say, well, I don't get it. There's two, con there's two stories here. And either we made a mistake or we just have two stories that we kind of put together. And granted, uh, many scholars believe that the second story was actually written before the first story. And uh, they are two different stories, but I believe they complement one another. They do. I really think that they do. Uh, the first creation story is a majestic poem that paints in broad strokes, the creation of the entire world with God saving his best work for last, creating man and woman 
at the story's climax. Insight into ancient Hebrew storytelling techniques has led to a newfound appreciation for the sophistication of biblical narratives. For example, Jewish scholar uh, Canaan Bricto. Canaan Bricto suggested that the juxtaposition of the two stories was not an uncommon occurrence in ancient biblical narratives. Bricto calls this the synoptic resumptive. That's an important word, the synoptic resumptive technique, wherein the first story looks at the big picture, a brief overview, if you will, while the second story resumes and retells the first in a more detailed fashion, focusing on its climactic elements. And so with these two creation stories, each has a distinct focal point. Each works together like a camera that can use one lens for a panoramic big picture and another lens to zoom in for a close-up shot. So as I mentioned earlier, we see that in the first episode, everything is good, and then there is a sharp reversal in the second telling, the second account, it's not good, the man is alone, and that changes the story. That changes the story at that point. And also there's another really interesting, uh, an another interesting angle here that some scholars have brought out, and I might just make mention at this early part of our study, you know there's a lot of scholarly debate on a lot of these issues. And uh, we don't claim to have the answer, but we're doing our best to tell you the story so that you can enter into it. The scholars will debate, and they are interesting debates. And we're open to that. And that's what makes Bible study so interesting. But some scholars say that Genesis 1 describes how God, Elohim, the word, the name is Elohim, called the cosmos into existence. While Genesis 2, the name of God changes from Elohim to Yahweh, Yahweh acting closely and personally by forming Adam from the ground so that there's like a personal, intimate relationship. Granted, there's two names, Elohim in chapter 1, Yahweh in chapter 2, but I think they work together to tell us one great story. Yes, Elohim created the world, but God is revealing himself in salvation history. He's Yahweh, and that's a beautiful thing. Well, then we move from the, the sixth day to the seventh day, because I still have a question that's not answered in my mind, and that is, why are we created on the sixth day? The seventh day, what does God do on the seventh day? The seventh day, he rests, he blesses the seventh day and makes it holy. It's the Shabbat. It's the Sabbath. And it's different than all other days, all other days. The one day that stands apart is the seventh day. Far from reading this as a seven-day, 24-hour time frame, the reader with an eye for detail will notice that although the first six days all have their evening and morning, and thus a clear ending to each of the first six days, the seventh day breaks from this six-fold pattern of repetition. I don't know if you notice that really carefully, but the point is clear. The seventh day has no end. The seventh day has no end. It is wholly different and of a different order than the six days of work. The seventh day is holy and represents divine rest. So it's kind of an interesting thing when you really look at it, when you see that God created Adam and Eve on the sixth day, and their very next day, what are they doing? You would think they'd go to work. They're resting. Isn't that odd that that happens right away, that they have to enter a rest? Now this is the Sabbath rest, the day of rest created for man, as Jesus told us later in Mark chapter 2 and verse 27, that the Sabbath was created for man, not man for the Sabbath. God is calling us, and this is what's really interesting, God is calling us, and I've asked myself this question, why were we created on the sixth day? And I'm convinced that we're not created for the sixth day. We're created for the seventh day. We're created to enter into a rest. We're created to enter into a place where we can receive the divine life that God has ordained us to receive, his blessing, his holiness. That's what I really think this is, this is all about. And so the narrative would suggest that 
we are called to go from the sixth day to the seventh day. And what's interesting is that the number six carries with it negative connotations throughout Scripture. For example, uh, Goliath didn't acknowledge God, and he was six cubits tall. That's Goliath. Nebuchadnezzar didn't acknowledge God and made a statue of himself that was 60 times 6 cubits tall, and Daniel describes him as a beast. Who can forget Revelation chapter 13? The number of the beast is given, and it's 666. Six, six. And of course, Solomon, who will be visiting in the Purple Period, the United Kingdom, the Royal Kingdom, later on in our study, he's told not to take much gold. This is what a prohibition for the, for the kings, but he did. And he had 666 talents of gold, and he was considered a tyrant and a ruthless leader at the end of his reign. But then you have number seven. And the seventh day, of course, is the Sabbath, and number seven carries with it a sense of fulfillment, a positive note. It's uh, oftentimes related to covenant. The, the number uh, seven is Shiva in Hebrew, S-H-E-V-A, transliterated, Shiva. And to enter a covenant, a berit, a berit, B-E-R-I-T, transliterated, you would have to swear an oath in most situations. You have to swear an oath. And to swear an oath, to swear an oath is Shava, S H. A-V-A. Remember, Sheva, seven, is S-H-E-V-A. But to swear an oath is very much related to seven, and in fact, it's to really to swear an oath is to seven oneself, or to, uh, to enter into a covenant through oath. And once an oath is sworn, kinship is the result. And so the number seven is oftentimes associated with covenant, and it, it can be assumed here that, 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 that God is entering into a covenant in creation with number seven. And so one of the beautiful things that we learn from this is that God is calling us to be different than the beast. He's calling us to enter into a relationship as sons and daughters where we can not only know him, but love him and partake of his divine life. And God ultimately calls us to be divinized. We are created in the image and likeness of God. I would suggest reading in the Catechism, and I'll say this occasionally, it's just for some extra reading, paragraph 51. And paragraph 51 talks about how we were created to share in his divine life. And that's really what we're called to. Well, let's get back to our story. In chapter 3, there's a big temptation going, going to go on here. And that's because we have a free will. And a free will uh, brings on tests, doesn't it? You know, someone said one time, they said, boy, I just wish that God would have created us so that we would have never done anything wrong. We just would have always been obedient. And I like to say to them, no, you don't. You don't wish that. How many, how, how many husbands want to marry a woman who all she does is just, yes, sir, and agrees. That's not love. And some of you are laughing because maybe that's... <laughs> that's not love. You want to marry someone who what? Makes a decision to freely give of themselves. How many women want a husband who will... Well, I won't go there. Maybe, maybe on that one, you do. I don't know. But that reminds me of the Stepford Wives. The movie, you know, just marrying someone that is, yes, sir, yes, sir. Nobody wants that. We want to be loved. It's your choice to love me, my choice to love you. And so we have this chapter 3 and the fall of man. Now, before we get to chapter 3, you have to be reminded of chapter 2 and verse 15. God gave Adam, he gave him some orders, if you will, some boundaries. He said, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. So there's the, the, uh, the parameters, if you will. Adam has been given this wonderful garden. He can eat freely of all of the trees except for this one tree 
of the knowledge of good and evil. God said, if you eat of that tree, you will die. You will die. And then you have after that, God create, creating woman, bringing woman to man. And uh, I think it's implied in the story that they have the close proximity of the garden, that they, uh, that they know the same information. Adam has passed this information on to his wife. We can eat freely of every tree, uh, but we cannot eat of the, of the one tree in the midst of the garden. Then in chapter 3 enters the serpent. Now, once again, I have to remind you of what uh, the Catechism tells us about chapter 3 in the fall, is that this is figurative language that tells us of primeval, primeval events that really happen to our parents, to our parents. So we start off and, it's, and it says, now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord God had made. Now let's pause there just for a moment and who ask the question, who was the serpent? Revelation gives an inspired commentary on Genesis 3. If you ever read the, the book of Revelation, the revealing the diabolic identity behind the serpent. Revelation 12, 9 says, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, unquote. Satan was a good angel. Lucifer, created by God. But Lucifer abused his free will. He abused his free will and chose to rebel against God. Many such rebellious, rebellious angelic beings exist and are called now demons because he took one-third out of heaven with him. You can read more about this in the Catechism in paragraphs 391 through 395, if you want to read further on the fall of Satan. But Genesis' description of Satan as a serpent is, a, is an example of how the account of the fall uses figurative language. So we, we see here, moving on, it says, um, he said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the, to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So there we have it, just what, five verses in chapter 3, and you have the ordeal. You have this temptation, the serpent, the nahash in Hebrew, N-A-H-A-S-H. Now what was the trick of the enemy? What was, what, what, what was the tactic of the enemy? How did he lure uh, uh, Eve at this point? And we have to also ask ourselves the questions, why was Adam so silent? I don't know that we're ever going to have a satisfying answer on that, but it's something to take note of that Adam was silent. What was Satan's lure? Number one, Satan twisted God's words. His attempt to get them to fall and sin involves twisting God's words. And my friends, I, I would submit to you that in your life today and in my life, any time that we sin in our life, there's always an attempt to twist God's words. We always twist God's words. I did this as a boy growing up. I did this as a boy growing up. My mother would say, do not take any cookies. You know, don't take any cookies. And I would go and I would end up taking cookies and she would call me on it and I'd say, I didn't know you meant all cookies. There's always... <laughs> Learn young. There's always an attempt to twist the word, and we have to watch that. Number two, he tempted them with created things. He tempted them with something that looked beautiful and tasted wonderful and was wise, give you wisdom. So he tempts us with things. We'll understand that more in just a, a few minutes. He also tempts them with power. Notice what he said. He said, you won't die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. There's power to be had. Number four, tempted to prefer selves over God. He's tempting them to prefer themselves over what God has said. Put yourself first. Another part of his tactic. 
But the one that I think really drives us home is number five, and that is the serpent's subtle suggestion that God is holding out. God is holding out. You ever thought about that? Notice what he said. You won't die. And I kind of, this is my own paraphrased version of this. I kind of imagine the, the serpent walking in and having this attitude. Where he walks into the garden, he sees Adam and Eve, you know? And he says, hey, how are you doing? Serpent, good to meet you. Has God been around here? Has he? Good, good, yeah. Walking around. Say, I want to talk to you about something. Um, as God goes, I mean, he's a good God, okay? Don't get me wrong. I mean, for the most part, good. But um, I got to tell you something. He's not telling you everything. He's not telling you everything. He's holding back. You see, he knows that when you eat of the tree, you'll be like him. He doesn't want that. You see, you can't trust him. My friends, that's the key to temptation. That's the, that's the key. Pride and losing trust. Those are the keys to the fall of Adam and Eve. And that is the question. Do you trust God? Listen to what it says in the Catechism in paragraph 397. It says, Man, tempted by the devil, let his trust in his creator die in his heart, and abusing his freedom, disobeyed God's command. This is what man's first sin consisted of. All subsequent sin would be dis disobedience toward God and lack of trust in his goodness. Isn't that powerful? Lack of trust in his goodness. So paragraph 397 and 398 are, um, are very important to get a hold of. It is precisely this conflict in Genesis 3 that sets the stage for the plot of the rest of Scripture's story. The fallen state of humankind and their separation from the God who loves them and desires to be with them is the problem that the rest of the biblical story will come, will uh, work, work to overcome. Very, very important. So, let's take a look at the results of the fall. What were the results of the fall? We know about the fall because verse 6 tells us so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate and she also gave some to her husband and he ate. And then the eyes of both were opened and they knew they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Right away, we notice, right away, right away, the consequences. Their eyes are opened, they're ashamed, they hide from God. They blamed each other. Ruptured relationships. In fact, listen to what it says in the Catechism in paragraph 400. It says, The harmony in which they had found themselves, thanks to original justice, is now destroyed. The control of the soul's spiritual faculties over the body is shattered. The union of man and woman becomes subject to tensions. Have you ever experienced that? The union of man and woman subject to tensions? Their relations henceforth marked by lust and domination, harmony with creation is broken, and death makes its entrance into human history. Paul said this. He said, I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Something has happened in the fall. Original justice is gone, original sin comes in, and the makeup of the human being is different. Death enters in, and suddenly now the intellect is darkened. And the will is weakened. The intellect is darkened, the will is weakened. And the result? concupiscence, what the church calls concupiscence. It's this tendency now to do wrong. It's the tendency to choose, to choose a lesser good rather than a greater good. 
But I want to ask the question as we get ready to conclude the story, something very important, and that is why do we sin? Why do we sin? Because I've got to be honest with you. When I read chapter 3, verse 6, <laughs> I read it and I think to myself, well, what's the big deal? What is the big deal? She saw that the food was a delight to the eyes. It was good for food. It was desirable to make one wise. What is not good about that? It wouldn't fly on the news today. Can you imagine the headlines? Parents eat banana and apple. All children will go to hell. <laughs> that wouldn't fly. And it doesn't fly today. And the reason is, is because people don't see under the hood just how heinous this was and what sin really is. Sin isn't choosing to eat an apple. There's nothing inherently wrong with, with the apple. In order to illustrate this, I want to go back to a story that St. Augustine told in St. Augustine's Confessions, a tremendous story about stealing a pear. St. Augustine was walking one day with his friends, and they saw pears on a pear tree, and uh, they decided to steal them. Now, he had a lot of other sins he could have chosen in his life, but he was really struggling with this one sin. Why did he do it? And his first thought was that he stole the pears, which they eventually threw at pigs. He stole the pears because he chose evil for evil's sake. And then he stopped and he said, no, no, that's against philosophy. You don't choose what's going to hurt you. You choose what you think is going to make you happy. It's going to bring joy, not what's going to make you miserable. So no, I didn't choose evil for evil's sake, so why did I choose throw and steal and throw those, those pears. I didn't like pears. I didn't need the pears. So why did I do it? And you know what his conclusion was? His conclusion was that he stole the pears because he desired the camaraderie and the friendship of the other boys. He wanted their camaraderie. What is it then that takes the desire for something good and transforms it into a sin? St. Augustine said, sins are committed when out of an immoderate liking for things, since they are the least goods, we desert the best and highest goods, namely God's best. The problem with sin is that the more we indulge, the more we need that good and the less we sense that we need God. And so the problem with, with Adam and Eve, specifically Eve in this instance here, is that Eve chose a lesser good. She chose a lesser good. She chose the fruit rather than choosing the greater good, which was God and obedience to God. And so any lesser good that takes the place of God can become an idol or can become sin in our life. And this can happen with anything in our life. Just think about it. It can happen with anything. Uh, an inordinate desire to buy shoes, a purse, golfing equipment, hunting equipment, an inordinate desire for anything can become sin. Gambling, anything. Entertainment can become sin. G.K. Chesterton once said, every man who knocks on the door of a brothel is searching for God. Every man who knocks on the door of a brothel searching for God. See, our problem isn't that we want evil, but we want what isn't good enough. Natural goods. And so all natural goods in this world must be kept in check with our Creator. That's our goal. That's our aim. And the biggest temptation that we have today are the natural goods, which can sidelight us, sideline us, and, and, and make us ineffective because that, the pursuit of natural goods becomes our whole life. Homes, toys, boats, cars, clothing, entertainment. And we live as though God did not exist. Now it's starting to sound more like the story of Eve. And we're entering that story and seeing our own downfalls in that story. So this is what Eve did in the garden. John Paul II made a comment. He said, as a rupture with God, sin is an act of disobedience by a creature who rejects, at least implicitly, the very one from whom he came and who sustains him in life. It is therefore a suicidal act. Since by sinning, man refuses to submit to God, 
His internal balance is also destroyed. Your internal balance is destroyed with sin. I can prove that even um, physiologically with a lie detector. Hook you up to a lie detector. You can look, look like you're telling the truth. You're telling the truth, but your body is defying you. Your blood pressure, the sweat on your, on your skin, your heart rate is all saying, liar! <laughs> because it throws off the internal balance in your system. And it is precisely within himself that contradictions and conflicts arise. John Paul II also said, as a personal act, sin has its first and most important consequences in the sinner himself, that is, in his relationship with God, who is the very foundation of human life, and also in his spirit, weakening his will and clouding his intellect. So you could say that after the fall, we're messed up. <laughs> we're messed up. And those things that we don't want to do, we do. And those things that we want to do, we don't do it. We have a darkened intellect and a weakened will. We need help. Thanks be to God, Jesus Christ has given us that help, and we're going to see that. We're going to see a struggling people on the way. We're going to learn a lot about ourselves and learn a lot about God. So what should we do when we sin, when sin stalks us? Number one, we should resist temptation. Reject the desire and remove ourselves from sin's jaws. Paul told Timothy, flee from youthful lusts. If we sin, we must repent. We must go to confession and we must do penance. We must repair that damage. But what if we don't repent? This is where it becomes dangerous. What if we continually choose the lesser good rather than the greater good, which is God, in our life? What if everything in our life starts to be set up as an idol instead of God? Well, a habit forms. And then we face God's punishment. The punishment is the attraction the sin exercises upon us. I'll say that again. The punishment, is, the punishment is the attraction the sin exercises upon us. In other words, the punishment becomes the pleasure we experience resulting in a desire for more and ultimately addiction. We're caught. We're caught. And suddenly, everything is backwards. Evil becomes our good, making it very, very difficult to repent because repentance is turning from evil, but now you will be turning from what is redefined in your heart as good. That affair, that overspending, that, that, that drinking. Very difficult to repent because we've redefined it as a good that brings pleasure. And Isaiah said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And what happens, unfortunately, is that eventually God removes your restraints and turns you over to your passions, as it mentions in Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through, two, through 28. But God does show mercy. In the midst of our addictions, we get caught. Now, most people think of that as the punishment, don't they? We get caught. Oh, God's punishing me. No. No, the punishment is the, is the, is the attraction that this sin exercises upon you. You just got caught. That's mercy. That's mercy. That's the flare being shot up in the midst of your darkness to give you one more shot at who you are. This is who I am. I had better wake up. I better turn this around. I better repent. Or else I'm turned over. And it's a sad, sad commentary. So that car wreck might be mercy. That lost job might be mercy. Your wife catching you in the middle of the night might be mercy. Because God is a loving Father that wants to turn your life around. And God's kindness, it says in Romans 2, 4, God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance. And then we end this chapter. There's good news. We know that they've fallen, they're in a mess, but there's good news, and that's in chapter 3 and verse 15. Chapter 3 and verse 15 is called the Proto-Evangelium. The Proto-Evangelium, Proto-First Evangelium. Good news! It's the first good news. Even in this dark moment, as Adam and Eve stand in the shadow of their sin, God in his love gives hope to Adam and Eve. Genesis 3.15, God gives the first promise of a Savior. He loves man and woman so much that he has crafted a plan, a plan of sheer goodness, 
a plan to redeem humanity, free us from sin, and fill us with his life. In the midst of the punishment meted out for the sin that set creation in disorder, a profound promise of hope is made by God. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And so on your timeline chart, you're following a red line all the way from the beginning all the way to the end. We're going to take a look at the seed of the woman. And I've got good news for you. I've got good news for you. The story is going to end also in a garden. And there's going to be victory. I had the privilege of watching the passion of, Christ, of the Christ. I actually watched it with, with Mel Gibson twice before it was edited. And he nailed it perfectly in that film where Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane sees the serpent coming out. And he reaches out with his foot and he crushes the head of the serpent. I looked over at Mel and I said, you nailed it. Genesis 3.15. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the enemy. And he did. And my friends, that's where we're going. And I might add that Catholic theology sees Genesis 3.15 as an important foundation for Marian teaching. The seed of the woman. And we're going to see that seed of the woman with the Blessed Virgin Mary at the end of our story. Jesus is going to conquer death, hell, and the grave. He's going to set an example for us and show us how to live. How to live. As we start out on this journey, think about your own life and the sin in your own life and the fact that God has a plan for you and that we must not let the enemy interrupt our relationship with God as our Father. We'll talk more about that later as we continue to study. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, we love you. And we pray, Lord, as we look into this amazing narrative, we pray that nothing would come in the way between us and you. Nothing would break the filial bond we have with you. We thank you for giving us strength as we begin this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, good evening po sa lahat. Opo. Good evening po sa lahat. Before we go into the small group discussion, uh, allow me po to give some guidelines and uh, orientation po no? how will we how we will go about it. Now, as we have read po from the email sent by Kuya Nick, now, there are two application questions that we need to respond to as part of homework natin. No? So one, uh, what are the ways, what are some ways we hide from the presence of God? And two, how does sin drive us further from His presence? If flash po namin ulit mamaya ito. Uh, last time we had five breakout rooms. Tignan po natin ngayon kung ilan tayo and maybe we can adjust. No? Uh, pero sana tinitignan natin tong, itong ating five breakout rooms would serve as our permanent core groups. No? So each core group is allotted 20 minutes for the discussion. No? This will include opening and closing prayers and then a short introduction to the activity by the facilitator. And then the actual sharing of participants on the given application questions. This setup presupposes that each participant has done yung parang home preparation natin. And we'll, we will just be reading yung ating responses. Although kung hindi naman po ito nagawa, wag naman po mag -worry kasi we will be giving around three minutes no, for others to write down their responses. Yung iba naman po, they can review or they can reflect pa rin and add to the responses. So reminder lang po, let us be conscious of the time, especially during the sharing. Sa number po natin na ano, we oh. we approximately, oh. we, uh, approximately three minutes allotted for the sharing po of no. each. The facilitator will ensure that everyone is able to do the sharing. Now, ang suggestion po natin since there are two questions, no, huwag nang uh, each member will be given, will be assigned one question lang po to answer. 
sa kanila. So, halimbawa, kung lima sa grupo, two will answer question number one and the rest would answer question number two dun sa sharing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, after po ng ano, small group discussion, there will be a plenary session. So, meron tayong reporting. So, there is a need to assign po. Uh, either it's the facilitator or uh, uh, an assigned group uh, participant po. Um, okay, so the yung mga questions po will be tackled sa ating ano, plenary session kung mayroong mag-aarise na questions during the group sharing. That's all po. So we're giving now, uh, this. Uh, we have flashed the questions, the guide questions. We are given three minutes po to review, reflect yung uh, ating mga sagot or yung mga hindi pa nakasagot can start writing the answers ng po. Thank you. Last one minute po. Time's up na po. So, uh, just to review yung mga groupings. Uh, Ate Christine? Yes po. Um, sa ngayon po, we still have five groupings pa rin po. Bali po sa group one, ang nandito po is si Ate Cheatman Lapaz, yung ating facilitator po. With her po is nandito po si Ate Dulce and si Ate Maha. For group 2 naman po, under Kuya Jan B naman po is, nandito po si Ate Dang, Ate Dolly, and ako po. Kuya si Kuya Butch, parang lumabas po, nawala po. Si uh, group 3 naman po, si, uh, under Ate Lolit, nandito po si Ate Sally from BEC. 
si Ati Elena po and Ati Bless, si Kuya Harold Pag- Pagio and hindi ko po sure ko sino po si Ra- Raul's iPhone pero sinama ko po siya sa group 3. Tapos po sa group 4 naman po under kay Ate Marik Pis nandito po si uh, Bro Bets, si Ate Cheryl Rojas, si Kuya Crisanto from SFC, Kuya Val nandito rin po and Ate Marik Chris Ito po, Ate Marikis po. And for group 5 naman po, under Ate Nem po, andito po si Kuya Kit and si Sister Imakuri. Ayun po. So, we have 20 minutes po, and then, kita-kits po tayo later. Kuya Nick and Ate Winnie, join na lang po kayo. Hindi ko po kayo mailalagay eh. Okay. Thanks po. Group namin. Right. So, take it away, Miss Chit. Kayo na po. Uh, alam mo, Kuya Nick, may, may uh, sharing kami doon sa group 1 na Hindi siya confidential pero dahil pinag-uusapan ni Kasalanan. So uh, at uh, ito ay kaisang karanasan. So tinatawagan ko si Ate Mahan. Nandiyan pa ba siya? Yes. Ate Mahan. Yes. Ate Mahan. Pa, uh, konti lang po kasi baka ma-miss out ko yung uh, essence nung gusto niyong sabihin sa big group. And it's a beautiful sharing. Yan. So Nick, uh, Ay, Kuya Nick, can we, can we give chance to Ate Maha to share to the plenty? Go ahead po, Ate Maha. Yun po, magandang gabi po sa lahat. Ano po, uh, doon po sa question po nung isa number one po, yung ways po na, uh, what are some ways we hide from the presence of God? Uh, share ko po kasi doon po sa share namin na Ate. Yung ano po, ah, uh, Kasi po, yun nga po, dati po, ano, yung katauhan ko po, uh, nasa kabilang po ako sa Twilight po. <laughs> ano po ako, uh, tomboy po ako. <laughs> yun po yung katauhan ko po dati. And uh, uh, nung sinimulan ko po na surrender po kay Lord Lord, uh, yun po, uh, praise God naman po at uh, pagbilis po nung Sabi ko nga kung marami akong ways na na na, na mga na, na itago sa kanya noon. Nat mas marami po pala yung mga pamamaraan po niya na kung paano niya po ako mabubuhay ngayon. Um doon po sa naging katauhan ko po na yon, uh, hindi ko po na mamalayan po kasi dati na uh, nalalayo na po ako sa kanya. Doon na po yung, yung sa question number two na how does sin drive, uh, drive us further from uh, His presence. Kasi uh, sa katauhan ko po na yun, um, dahil nga conscious naman po ako na mali, pero ang pamamaraan ko po na, na, na instead po na baguhin, um, naging ano, parang nalalayo ko ako kay Lord. Parang ayoko na magsipa, ayoko na magpray. At uh, yun po, na, pero uh, yun, sa awa po at uh, pagmamahal po ng pang uh, hey. nakabalik po ako. Thank you po, Ate Ma. Thank you. So yung, yung umikot po yung aming talakayan doon sa, sa isang karanasan ang buhay na, at sirkumstansya kung saan uh, mas pinipili namin pinipili ng ang kadiliman nagiging sekuridad kapag nandoon ka sa dilim at uh, pinipili mo din kung sino yung tao makakaintindi sa iyo doon sa kadiliman mo yon pero yung grupo ay na, na, na nandoon sa punto na puti na lang puti na lang at nahuli no? uh, itong paghuhuli ng Dios na to ito yung turning point sa buhay ng grupo para bumalik uli sa kung saan dinadala ng Diyos. At uh, isang, isang, I would like to underline also the, the point of when we lose sight of our identity, 
that we are the image of God. Yun ang pinag-usapan kanina. When we lose sight of that identity, we are always breaking relationship. And we are not acknowledging this God. Hindi natin dinitignan itong Diyos na to, nakahawig at kawangis pala natin. End of the sharing. Eh. Ay, Kuya Nick. Thank you. Uh, papacilitate mo to, di ba? Opo. Punta na po tayo ngayon sa group 2. Meron uh, po ba? Uh, ate, um, kami sa group 2, wala po si ate dang, tama po yung sinabi ni Kuya Nick, may konting problema po sa breakout room. So, nawala po si Kuya Nick. Uh, ate dang, uh, si ate Dali, pagdasal po natin dahil uh, hinihika siya kaya kasama na yung allergy. Tapos si, si Kuya Butche, mayroon yata na inattend na muna. So kami dalawa lang po na ni Ate Tin pero si Ate Tin po magre-report. Ate Tin. Hello po, good evening po. Um yun nga po, uh, nasabi ni Kuya John B na ano po, dalawa lang po kami na nakapag-usap po kanina talaga. Tapos as for the ano po, sorry po talaga. Mukhang may issue po yung internet. Nag ano, ang dami po ako nakikita kanina pa na nadadrop sa mga ano po, memory. Tapos po yung doon naman po sa ano namin, sa sharing namin. Uh, parehas kami po ni Kuya Jan binang sagot doon sa una na some way that we hide from um, the presence of God. Yung pag yung times po na parang nafe-feel namin, parang medyo napupuno po. Yung parang medyo madami na po yung ano, uh, ginagawa or parang medyo nalulula rin po sa gawain. Alam namin na tama or nasa direction pero parang minsan nakakaano po yung sinasabi nga po ni Rodney sa kanya na nakaraan na spiritual dryness din which is topic din namin kanina ni na Mary nung nag ano po kami uh, nag Bible study kami kanina sa ano sa labas tapos po yung sa number 2 naman po <clears throat> how does sin drive us further from his uh, presence yung ano po namin doon is yung sin um, nakaka-drive po sa atin ng palayo kay Lord dahil mas nagagawa nga po natin yung mali. Which is, yung kanina po yung kinukwento ni Jeff, yung about dun sa sinabi ng devil kay Eve, na nakapag-commento pa nga po ako na pinakaunang fake news. Kasi yung na ano po natin is yung something na hindi tama tungkol dun sa isang bagay, kaya mas napapaniwalaan po natin. So, Kung iba, yung iba, nagkakaroon nga po ng tendency na minsan nagagalit po or minsan na ano po doon sa situation ng buhay nila. Yun lang po, end of sharing po. Thank you. We move now si Ate Christine. Group 3 po. Uh, parang ako po ba kuya Nick ang magre-report? <laughs> Pero si Ate Sally po yata yung... Yung kagrupo namin, paano po ba kuya Nick? Sige po, si, uh, okay na po ba yung audio ni Ate Salid? Uh, uh, magandang gabi po, uh, pwede na po ako makapag-sharing. Okay. Ang sa akin, number one, what are the some way that we hide from the presence of God? Uh, sa akin, buhay ay natanggap po ako sa magandang mga salita ng ating presence of God. Um, dati uh, talaga hindi ko talaga ano sa God kasi marami ang pumapasok sa akin ng mga uh, kagaya ng kagaya ng mga Iba-ibang mga tarap na kaigaya ng Jehuba, uh, Iglesia, dami nag-ihikayat sa akin. Pero uh, once na dumating ako sa punto ng God na nagdaan sa akin, na doon na talaga ako nag huminto nung dumating ako sa bahay ni Kuya Rene. Diyan ako nag-toon sa God. Hindi na ako na, na, uh, naaaya sa ibang mga 
ano, kagaya ng uh, Iglesia Jehova. Diyan ako nahikayat sa aking tiyahin <coughs> na ano siya sa Panginoon. Siya nag-guide sa akin na ling- tuwing linggo, lagi kami magsisimba. Uh, lagi ko siya kasama tuwing linggo. Eh, yun dyan ako nagtuon sa ating Panginoon. So marami na rin mga pagsubok na dumaan sa akin pero hindi niya ako pinabayaan. Kagaya ng dalawang kapatid na nawala sa akin pero siya talaga ang nag-guide sa akin na manatili sa ating Panginoon na hindi nila ako mahikayat na sa, kung saan sa mga Uh, kagaya ng mga ano, mga ibang relihiyon Isa lang talaga ang pinagtunan ko. Uh, dyan talaga nagbago ang aking pananaw sa Panginoon nang nahikayat na ako sa katulik na mga katikisim o ano ng mga pasilidad na nasasali na ako sa sa katulik. Diyan na ako nagpukos. Hindi na ako sumasama sa ibang mga relihiyon. Dahil maraming mga pagsubok na ibinigay niya sa akin. Hindi niya ako na nahikayat sa ibang mga relihiyon. Nagpukos na ako kay God. Yan lang po ang aking masasabi sa presensya sa kanya. Na... Wow. Maraming <laughs> salamat niya. po. Oo. Masaling salamat po, salamat po. Oh, oh, Ati oh. Viva at Kuya Rene, kayo po sa akin ang nag-guide. Na hindi pa ako magpunta sa ibang relihiyon. Thank you, thank you, Kuya. Oh, salamat po. Salamat po, Ati Sally. Okay. Uh, punta po tayo sa group 4. Good evening po. Nadidinig po ako. Nadidinig po. Opo. Uh, yung group 4 po ay... Uh, Lima po, ay lima ba? Uh, kinabibilangan po ito ni uh, Ate Cheryl, ni Kuya uh, Robert, ni Kuya Bice, Kuya Alessandro, tsaka po, ako nga po. Um, yung sagot po namin sa number one, um, though hindi po kasi naubusan kami ng oras, pero um, i- ano ko na lang po, um, sabihin ko na lang din po, what are some ways we hide from the presence of God? Um, nirelate po namin ito dun sa Uh, nabanggit po ni, ni Kuya Jeff uh, na yung tungkol po sa mga kung paano, anong ginawa ni Satan para, do, para madisig yung mga, yung sa, sila ay Adam and Eve. Ang nasabi po doon, Satan twisted God's word. So, i-relate ko na lang din po siya doon sa, uh, sa buhay po natin. Um, uh, sometimes kasi uh, we fall to sin because we are not knowledgeable on the, yung, kung ano yung Uh, tulad ng God's word or we will just na hindi natin alam na yung ma- madali lang tayong uh, lumusot kasi sabihin lang natin hindi, hindi kasi natin alam na ganun pala pala ganun um, then uh, we also ano uh, we justify also our bad habits para lang makalusot tayo so yun yung nasa yun yung binubulong sa atin ng, ng ano ng evil uh, Uh, tinutwist niya yung uh, God's word. So, mag-justify na lang tayo. Kung para, para uh, bakit natin ginawa yun, sabihin natin. Kasi ganun, ganun. Mag-reason out na lang tayo. Then, uh, another yung pong uh, tempted to prepare selves over God. Uh, i-relate din po siya na siguro um, pag po tayo naglalay, so, nagiging ano tayo, di ba? Minsan nagiging hypocrite tayo para lang patunayan natin yung yung ating mga kasi mga lingan or ano. So parang uh, we prefer na yung yung goodness, yung maging uh, good tayo, pero sa mata ng Panginoon, hindi dahil uh, yun nga po, um, nag ano lang tayo, um, nagiging hypocrite tayo dahil meron tayo kasi lanag yung kaya nag-lie, yung simpleng lie lang, yun po yung um, na, nag-uumpisa din po, kahit sa simpleng sin lang, eh, yung mga mga complicated things. Then, uh, siguro, um, ginagawa din natin yung 
uh, nandadamay tayo or nagpo-point tayo sa iba. Yun. Kaya po, yun yung nagiging result pag, ano, uh, yung sa temptation ng preparing ourselves over God. Yun. Nandadamay tayo na para lang mag, magtuturo tayo kasi si ganun, kasi si ganyan. Kaya ko nagawa yun. Parang ganun po. Then yung second um, question, how does sin drive us farther from His presence? So, uh, sin lead us to be self-centered. Yun po yung sa temptation po to prepare selves over God. Sin hides the blessings or the goodness of God which makes us ungrateful. Hindi po natin nakikita yung yung mga blessings na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Uh, pangatlo, simple sin lead us to a more complicated one. Yung tulad nga po ng sabi ni Kuya Chet, yung nagiging uh, nagkakaroon ng addiction sa mga uh, earthly things. Ganun po. Then, we become focused on the earthly things din po instead of Him, instead of our God. And, uh, kaya po nawawalan din tayo ng time para sa Kanya. And uh, we become stressful then that na naglilid for us to harm others and uh, and ourselves physically or verbally na naglilid din po sa ano uh, disruption ng relationship with God and with the other people then um yun po uh, yung sin like addiction uh, it lead us in forgetting or not prioritizing our God yun lang po thank you po thank you po Ate Mary Chris Alright, and we move now to the last group, group 5 po. Sit, hindi kami nakapag-grouping dahil na-scatter na kami sa lahat, eh, no? na, na nagkahiwa-hiwalay kami. At uh, siguro magbibigay na lang ako ng isang insight para dun sa ano. Kasi kami mayroong question kanina tungkol sa light and darkness, eh, no? Uh, Sa aking pananaw, ang darkness ay non-entity. No? Uh, yung nagkakaroon lamang ng darkness because of the absence of light. Ang uh, ano dito, ang aking uh, 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 paniniwala, pagkagagaya ng ano, yung sa Discovery Channel, ano, yung sa Deep Sea, yung katotal ni Kadiliman, pero pagka nagsinag ng ilaw, ay nakukunan nila ng mga pictures, yung mga magagandang bagay sa ilalim. Ano, no, ng, ng dagat no so yun ang aking picture so uh, the absence uh, kagaya ng yung mga reading na susunod natin sa simbahan ngayon uh, the people in darkness are seen a great light no so yung absence ng ano so napakahirap no uh, kung mananatili ka sa kadiliman ang dat, dapat ko lamang gawin ay imbitahin ang liwanag doon sa buhay na yon no so yung pinaka ano pinaka uh, lugar na nando doon na uh, malayo sa Diyos ay mananatili sa kadiliman no at uh, doon ka lamang magwo-work sa kadiliman at hindi mo nakikita no kung uh, sabi nga ni Jeff kanina yung parang kabaligtaran yung ginagawa mo parang yun ang tama pero nando ka pa rin sa kadiliman so the, the ano the, the best solution for that is to invite God in that darkness so the, Light will shine. Thank you. Thank you, Kuya Kits. So, yun po yung ating five representatives from the five groups po. Ano? So, just a one-time thing po na nakikita pong parang pag natin yung, yung kasalanan ngayon ay um, kagaya ng sinabi ni Kuya Jeff kanina sa kanyang talk. We live as though God does not exist. Kapag nasa kasalanan tayo, we live as though God does not exist. So then for the, meron palaging internal, sabi niya, may internal imbalance. At yung mga, mga sharing ngayon ay uh, very specific na kapag nandun ka sa kadiliman sa gaya ng sinabi ni Kuya Kits kanina, uh, nagkakaroon ng parang yun ng secu- security mo and you're always looking for light para magkaroon ng balance sa buhay. So kapag uh, nakikita natin ito, yung uh, sana no, yung yung nag-uusap kanina, yung pinag-uusapan natin magbuhat kanina ay yung nakikita natin na ang Diyos ay nasa tamang panahon kung kailan tayo kukunin doon sa 
kasalanang na yun at bibigay tayo ng, o ilalagay tayo sa liwanag. So, Kuya Nick, yun po yung nagiging uh, parang essence ng ating sharing ngayong gabi. Thank you po. Salamat, Miss Chit. Uh, salamat din sa mga nag-share, ano? sa mga nagbahagi. Kuya Rene, kayo na po. Synthesis. Okay. Uh, magandang gabi po sa inyo lahat. Uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong mga sharing at uh, uh, mapakaganda ng ating uh, talakayan ngayong gabi. Ano po? Uh, for our synthesis, uh, nice ko po sanang balikan yung ating objectives. Ano ha? Uh, number one objective po natin is to help us know God and to know ourselves. And that is understand why we are here And then yung pangalawang objective po natin is to help us know how to make choices and trust God even when this is difficult. So dun po sa ating uh, unang objective, ano po, to help us know God and to help us know ourselves. Uh, napakaganda po ng ating uh, talakay ngayong gabi. No? Usually po, napansin ko lang, pagka pinag-usapan kwentuhan, Usually po ang mga kwento nagsisimula sa once upon a time. Hindi po ba? <laughs> Pagka yung magkwento ka nga, yan, usually ang, ang umpisa ay once upon a time. Yan. Pero ito pong kwento ni Kuya Jeff, hindi po once, a time, once upon a time ang simula. Ano po? Ang simula ng kwento, in the beginning. Ano po? Yan, in the beginning. Sabi nga po ni kanina ni Kuya Jeff, kumisan daw po para mas maunawaan natin ay yung theology ng ating Bible study, kesa itanong yung papano, mas maganda tanong ay bakit. Ano po? So uh, sa Genesis 1 to 3, kinwento po sa atin ang paglikha. Ano po? Paglikha ng uh, heaven and earth. Uh, paglikha ng tao. At uh, uh, tinunghayan po ni Kuya Jeff sa umpisa. Ano po? Nagsimula nga, sabi nga ni Kuya Kim, sa kadiliman, doon tayo nagsimula eh. Everything was dark, it was without a form, and then it was void. So, ang una pong kinrate ni God was form. Ano po? That is why He created the heaven and the earth. And then He created the water and the sky. And then He created the land. So, nagkaroon po ng form. Now, nung meron na pong form, which was still void, God decided now to fill the void. And that is why He created the sun, the moon, and the stars. He created the fish and the birds and the animals. And then finally, He created man. Ano po? So first portion, for muna ang binuo ng Diyos. Pangalawa, yung void. Kanyang pinuno, ika nga, yung walang laman. Okay. Now, uh, that is God. And He was wanting to make a dwelling place. Ngayon po, dun sa pangalawang portion when he created uh, to fill in the void by creating the the fish and the birds and the animals and then man uh, nice ko po sana uh, dalhin ko kayo at uh, bigyan pansin ano po uh, yung Genesis uh, chapter 1 verse 26 ano po akakaiba uh, po kasi itong uh, araw na ito kung saan kinread uh, nila lang ng Diyos ang tao. Sa Genesis 1.26, it reads and I quote, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our mini image and after our likeness. Ano po? So, yun ang, uh, yun ang uh, kalooban ng Diyos. Ngayon po, ito ang kagandahan nun. Ano po? Hindi pa tayo nila lang So, binanggit na rin po ng Diyos kung ano ang pakay niya. Kung bakit tayo gagawin o lalangin ano ho, at bakit sa kanyang, uh, sa kanyang anyo at wangis. Ito po ang kanyang dahilan. Ano po, sabi niya, Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame animals, all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the earth. Uh, Nag-gets nyo po? Hindi pa tayo nilikha. Buo na po ang kalooban ng Panginoon kung bakit niya tayo lilikhain. 
And then verse 27 goes, God created mankind in His image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. Yan. Tapos pakinggan niyo po yung kasunod na verse. Napakahalaga. Sabi po niya, God blessed them and God said to them. Kinausap na niya po kagad. Ano po? Meron na siya sinabi kagad sa, sa nilikha niyang mga tao. Sabi niya, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Napakalinaw po, no? Subdue it. Sabi po niya, have dominion. You know, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that crawl on the earth. Nag-guess niyo po yung, yung sinabi ng Diyos. Alalumbaga, sinasabi niya, kayo ngayon ang mamahala sa lahat ng aking nilika. Alright? Short of saying, sabi niya, nilika ko kayo sa aking wangis at hugis at uh, 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 sa aking anyo at wangis dahil kayo ang gusto kong mangibabaw, mamuno, mag-alaga. Mamahala. Sa, mamahala. Yan. Thank you. Thank you, ma. Mamahala sa lahat ng aking nilalang. Nakita niyo po ba ngayon yung dahilan kung bakit tayo nandito ngayon? Una, hindi pa tayo nilikha. Binanggit na ng Diyos ang kanyang kalooban para sa atin. Tapos tayo nilikha. At pagkatapos tayo po ay pinagsabihan kagad kung ano ang dahilan kung bakit tayo nilikha. Sabi nga ni Kuya Jeff, ask why more than asking how. Bakit tayo nilikha? Ito po may kasunod pa. Ano po? Ayun po kasunod ngayon, sabi nga nun. Uh, God also said, yan, God also said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on all the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it be your food. And to all the wild animals, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the earth, I give you all the green plants for food. And so it happened. And God looked at everything he made and found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Yan. Again, pag inisa-isa po natin yung araw ng kanyang paglikha, starting from day one, ang sinasabi lang po ng Diyos, uh, when he looked at what he created, he would say, this is good. Pero dito po sa, uh, sa sixth day, nung nilikha niya ang tao, na ibang sinabi niya. This is very good. This is very good. Ito po ngayon, yung sinabi niya na, eh, ano po yan rin niya, anong say-say na sinabi niya na binigay niya lahat para sa tao at saka para sa kanyang nilika. Now, here comes the test. Alright? Short of saying, o oh, ayan na, pinrobide ko na lahat ang kailangan niyo. Short of saying, wala na kayong ahanapin pa. Yan. <laughs> okay? E eh, dito ngayon pumasok yung kaaway, yung kalaban. Sabi nga ni Bro Betz kanina, ginamit niya subtle suggestion. O, oh, kinausap kayo ng Diyos. Anong sabi niya? Yan, di ba? E sabi lahat-lahat daw, amen, maliban lang sa isang uh, puno na hindi namin dapat kainin ng bunga. Uh, bakit? E pagka ganun daw, sabi nga kami mamamatay. ano sabi ng kaaway? Hindi, hindi kayo mamamatay. Alright, then ito ngayon, nagtanim na kasi siya ng pagdududa sa kanila. Alam nyo, sabi nga na, mabuti naman ng Diyos eh. Yun nga lang, hindi niya sinabi ang lahat sa inyo. Hindi niya sinabi na pag kayo ay kumain sa bunga ng puno na ito, kayo ay magiging kapareho niya. Ayan, twisting the truth, ika nga. <laughs> Alright? <news. laughs> fake news. Sabi, fake news. Diba? Eh atin naman nakita sabi na ng Diyos, likahin natin sila sa ating ay, a, anyo at wangi. So we already are like Him. Eh ngayon, tunis ng, tunis ng kalaban, di ba? Uh, ayaw niya kayo maging kagaya niya. Sabi nga nun, no? Ito na ngayon, doon na ngayon nag, nagsimula yung duda. Alright? Doon na nag, ika nga, nagkawindang-windang. <laughs> uh, doon na bumagsak sa test. Alright? Ang ating mga ninuno. Now, uh, I, I hope you will understand, okay, in the very beginning, God 
was so loving that in his goodness, all right, because actually he is a family in the triune God, all right, and that is he wants of us. Sabi nga ni Prince Jeff Kalina, sa dalawang kwento ng creation, una, he was called Elohim, almighty, all-powerful. Pero on the second creation story, he was called Yahweh. All right? Alam mo, bagay parang mapagmahal na ama. Okay? So it's a combination of both kaya complementary, no? All-powerful, almighty, but also all-loving. All right? To build that intimacy with us. Yun. So that is God, and that is who we are and why we are here. Ngayon, yung pangalawang objective, to help us know how to make choices and trust God even when it is difficult. Yan, sa po tayo ngayon nahihirapan? Yan, dahil doon sa pagbagsak ng ating mga ninuno sa unang ikang ay pagsusubok, <laughs> All right, na ating binana, ang ating, ang ating pong pagsusubok ngayon is there are times we would prefer ourselves more than prefer God. Ano po? Kaya yung unang tanong kanina, how do we hide ourselves from God? Yan. Kagaya po ng ating mga ninuno, pagkatapos nilang bumagsak sa pagsusubok, ikangan, nabuksan ang kanilang mata at nakita nila sila hubut-hubad. Yan. Kaya sabi kay Kuya ni kanina, o baka may iskandalo si Sister Immaculate sa picture mo kasi nakahubad si Malakas. Buti wala si Maganda, si Malakas na nga nandun. <laughs> sabi naman, Sister, Kuya Ray, art lang yan. Art lang yan. Okay. But in the first story of creation, when our uh, first parents saw that they were naked, they felt ashamed. Ayun na. That was when the choices started to be. Kasi nung unang wala naman, everything was good. Eh. But this time, uy, nakabad kami, nakakahiya. And they covered themselves with leaves and they hid from God. Na nag-guess niyo po ngayon, do sila una nagtago sa Diyos. After they fail the test. So tayo ngayon, paano tayo nagtatago sa Diyos when we fail the test? Pag tayo po ay hinarap ng test or tantokso, number one, if we cannot resist temptation, number two, if we cannot reject the desire, and then number three, if and when we fall into sin, that is when we hide from God, from God dahil nakakahiya tayo. Alright? Ano nakakaya, Kuya Rene? Sa kabila ng kanyang kabutihan, hindi pa rin tayo makasunod at kung anong hinahangad natin ay siyang nangingibabaw laban sa kanyang kalooban. Oh! And then how does the sin alright, prevent us further from the presence of God? Sabi po ni Kuya Jeff kanina, ano po, pag nagsimula tayo magkasala, yung unang pagnanais natin, actually ang sabi nga, ano ba masama sa isang, isang bunga, mansanas o saging? Mabuti yan. Alright? Pero ano yung masama? Actually, masama yung pagsaway sa prohibition ni God. Diba? Yung disobedience ika nga. Kung saan, mas nangingibabaw yung ating kagustuhan kesa sa kaloban ng Panginoon na ang kanyang nais lang ay yung kung ano yung pinakamabuti para sa atin. But then we choose the lesser good, sabi ni Kuya Jeff. Okay, now what happens? When we choose the lesser good, all right, akala natin yun ang maganda at tama, yun ang ating nais gagawin at yun ang ating ginagawa. Ngayon, ito na masakla. Pag ito yung nagustuhan natin, it will come to the point na ating ngayong iniisip, ito ang tama, ito ang mabuti. Kahit na ito yung hindi. Why? Because now the truth is twisted. Yan. Ngayon, pag hindi natin nabatid na mali ang ating ginagawa at tuloy-tuloy natin ginagawa, it becomes a habit. It becomes an addiction. And when it does, lalo tayong nababaral sa kadiliman, lalo tayong nagtatago sa Diyos o ating Panginoon. Until, yan, we're given the grace or the mercy. No? A grace at saka mercy. Yun daw pong grace, yun yung biyay ang tinatanggap natin na hindi natin dinideserve. Yun namang mercy, yun naman natin, hindi natin dinideserve, pero yun ang tinatanggap natin dahil mahal tayo ng Diyos. In His mercy, He gives us a chance to turn around, to repent. Ano po? And when that happens, it is His wake-up call. 
O Rene, mali ang ginagawa mo. Balik ka na. Yan. All right, so we return by repentance and by doing penance and by reforming ourselves. Now, this is the cycle that he wants. Ito po yung pinapaliwanag ni Kuya Jeff. Okay, in the first three chapters of Genesis, okay, to synthesize it, uh, God wants to have a dwelling place for him and us. That is why he created us. And he wants us to be like him. All right? Now, unfortunately, the enemy did not take it sitting down. Uh, Satan was a very good angel. All right? He was the light bearer. He was Lucifer. Unfortunately, because of his ambition and because of his greed, he abused his power. All right? He decided to be like God or to be more than God. All right? And that is what, what caused him to rebel. And he took one third of the angels with him. And these angels are now called demons. Ito yung mga demonyo. <laughs> Siya ngayon, si Satanas, kasama niya mga kapo niya, mga demonyo. And now, in their rebel against God, alam naman ni Satanas, hindi niya kaya ang Diyos. So, ano yung ginagawa niya? Pilit niya sinasaktan ng Diyos sa pamamagitan natin. Kung hindi ko kaya ang pahirapan ng Diyos, pahirapan ko ang kanyang mga nilikha para sumama o masaktan ang loob ng Diyos. This is how he's doing his rebellion. All right? There's not the constant struggle. However, sabi nga ni Kuya Jeff, ang ating kwento nagsimula sa isang hardin, ano ha, sa paraiso. At sabi niya, ang ating kwento ay magtatapos din sa isang hardin. Pero ang hardin na ito ay ang hardin ng victory and triumph. All right? And when that time comes, sabi niya, makikita natin kung sino talaga ang bida. <laughs> All right? Ang binhi, ika nga, ng babaeng ito ay siyang tatapak sa ulo ng ulupong na ito at eventually mananalo. Yan po ang aking sa synthesis para sa ating talakay ngayong gabi. Uh, sana po natunghay natin ating objectives uh, upang ating makilala ang Diyos na lumikha sa atin at makilala natin ang ating mga sarili na nilikha niya ayon sa kanyang anyo at wangis upang yan, upang Gampanin, gampanan natin ang kanyang nais na uh, ano sabi, mamahala, Mama, mamahala. mamahala manguna at ika nga eh, mag-alaga ng kanyang buhong nilikha. Ngunit datapot subalit sabi nga, okay, pag kayo mamahala, dapat sana yung pinamamahala nyo ay sumusunod sa inyo. Kaya sabi niya, tignan ko nga kung gano'n kayo susunod sa akin. At doon po pumalpak ang ating mga ninuno. Ngunit datapat subalit, binigyan tayo ng pangalawang pagkakataon. Sabi ng ating Diyos, Yahweh, alright, iniibig ko ang aking mga anak. Hindi ako papayag na mawala sila sa ato. Alright? Kahit ng aking kaisa isang bugtong anak, ang aking ipaparit upang may kaya ito sila upang bumalik, ito'y aking gagawin. At yun na nga po ang kanyang ginawa. At yun po yung ating mga tutunghayan sa mga susunod na kabanata na ating tatalakayin kasama ni Kuya Jeff. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikinig. May God bless us all. Back to you, Kuya Nick. Uh, thank you, Kuya Rene. Bago yung closing at saka yung blessing, uh, gusto ko lamang uh, ulit pasalamatan yung group and then continue uh, yung pong mga materials uh for for ano yung yung po mga materials na uh, pinapadala through makikita niyo yan sa yung mga email and then yung mga link ng mga video ay pag stay po yan for one week if you want to review it you can uh, review it no Uh, and then yung pong mga kasama natin, so yung mga wala pang email address na i-submit, pakitulong na lang po. And then to some na uh, gusto pa rin isama yung iba, we have until next uh, session po, yung last na session. After that po, we stop at meeting na sa ating enrollment dito sa ating Bible timeline.
Okay, so let's maximize that and let's invite yung ibang mga, lalo na sa BEC. Thank you kay Ate Sally at saka kay si Kuya Renato, wala sa ngayon. Uh, pero the, B, the BEC group are very active dito sa ating Bible Timeline, uh, basic Ecclesial Community Group. Uh, Kuya Rene, sige po uh, sa closing. Okay, so uh, for our closing, sana po uh, ating nabatid ngayong gabi. Uh, sana mas nakilala. Sorry, Kuya Rene, may, may lumang nagsabi. Uh, meron bang dudugtong? Sorry. Hello? Wala naman. We can proceed? Okay. Sige, Kuya Rene. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, so uh, in closing, uh, sana po uh, ating mas nakilala ang ating Diyos sa ating mga talakay ngayong gabi. At sana po ating dinabatid at mas nakilala ang ating mga sarili. Kung bakit tayo nilalang at kung bakit tayo nandito ngayon. At sana po ating rin mabatid na minuminuto o sigusegundo sa ating paggalaw sa ating buhay, we always make choices. Ano po? Every inch of the way, it is always a choice we will have to make. Our prayer, by God's grace, sana every step we make, we make the right choices. And sana our choices will guide us towards our destiny. And that is to go back to our Father in heaven. And in that, in that regard, uh, allow me now uh, to say our closing prayer. Dear God-loving Father, we praise and we thank you for being our God, our Creator. But we praise and we thank you likewise for being our loving Father, for having created us and for making us your children. We now ask you for your blessing, Lord, that every inch of the way, may we make our decisions that are based on your holy will for us. And Father, we pray that you may grant us the grace to make this happen, O oh Lord dear God, in spite of the difficulties we may be facing. And for this, we now pray, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us all, now and for always. Amen and amen. God bless us all. Maraming salamat po sa inyo na. Back to you, Prini. Thank you. Zoomi po. And then core group, may iwan po ng sandali. Can we take a Zoomi shot? Okay, open lang po yung mga video cam. Kuya uh, Harold, thank you very much po sa yung time. Next Friday ulit. One. Kuya Crisanto, salamat po. Okay, ready po. One, two. Sama daw po yung pamangkin ko. Alika na. Alika na. Alika na. Alika rito. Okay po. One, two, three, go. Okay. Annyeong. Good night po. Good night po. Good night po. Good night po. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Until next Friday. Mag-invite ka, Berna. Mag-invite din po kami, Kuya Nika. Okay po. Go ahead po. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Ate Dulce, thank you po sa email. Kuya Val. Bye po. Thank you po. Hello. Okay. Yung may, may, mga, may pumasok kanina si Raul. Hindi, hindi siya nakapagsabita. Hindi siya nakapag-share. Pero hindi rin siya nag oh. hindi, hindi rin siya nakapagpakilala. Kapatid ko po yun. Raul. Ay! Kanina yun. Saka po yun. Ano yun kanina po yun, Nick? Yung kapatid ni Ate Marie Chris? Hindi ba si Harold yun? Dalawa. Tatlo po sila, tatlo. Yung isa rin pong, yung Sol din po, babae. Ay, yung si Sol. Okay, nakita kong pumasok pero nawala sa kanya. Nawala din po agad. Ay, nawala din. Oh, oh. 
Ito si Raul, akala ko pa nga, si among Raul namin. Raul, <laughs> okay. Uh, sige po, let's just go around and then uh, general uh, yeah, ano po, assessment natin sa ating ginawa ngayong gabi. At ako sa... Yeah, Kain lang po ako ng dinner po. Ah, ah sige, po. Ahead po. Mag-close po ako ng videos. Nag-text ako sa inyo. Ah, sige, sige po. Uh, So ang ating uh, ano lang po thumbs up thumbs down po yung ating pakiramdam ng kape or yung buong assessment natin for the poll. Let's start with uh, Ate Christine. Ha. Oh. Thumbs up thumbs down. Gitna po. <laughs> may ka, may ka, may ano meron akong mali po na nagawa. Uh, I parang think... feeling ko po dapat po pala pagka nag-start po yung breakout. Parang mas better po na mag-stay po muna ako ng 5 minutes. <laughs> sa plenary bago po ako sumama sa breakout para okay. i-check pa po yung iba pa po. Okay. Pero okay po, no? Hindi uh, natin alam kung saan nanggaling yung glitch na yun, eh, no? Opo. Okay. First yung time mo mangyari yun. Yung kay Ate Dang po, uh, for sure po nagloko po yung internet niya kasi lagi po nangyayari sa kanya yun. Ayun. Okay. <laughs> Pero may mga times din kasi yung may mga account na hindi nakakapasok sa mga breakout rooms. Okay. So ang ginawa namin kanina, sa main room na lang kami nag-discuss. Opo. Okay. Yun po yung ano, uh, nakikita ko po na dapat po pala next time, mag-stay po muna ako ng 5 minutes. Okay. Tapos, ang problema, po... uh, we have to leave uh, yung group namin para samahan yung group ko. Dadalawa lang daw kasi sila. Opo. Okay. okay. Uh, Miss Chit, ikaw, kumusta? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay. Thank you. May, ano lang may yung sa summary, yung sa yung sa report, okay ba 'yon? Ah, uh, meron bang dapat uh, in-do? I, I understand yung intention, ano, pero yung naka-establish kasi ng pattern na in personal yung sharing more than yung summary nung group na kanila ang sinishare. Oo. Oh. Pero uh, I understand the intention naman kasi na, na napakaganda nung, nung experience kasi. Kaya lang ang tendency, yung, yung mga sumunod, nag-follow suit sila dun sa, sa ano, dun sa... Tama. Sa, Oo, oh, sa personal uh, ano yung kanilang senior. So it has to be only not any more group reporting, kundi a synthesis of the whole thing, ganun? Oh, ganun naman yung ano yung common, di ba? Sa uh, yung unique. Uh, common dun sa naging sharing ano yung uh, uh, ilang ang i-share nila yung common at uh, unique, hindi yung buong experience. Okay, thank you. Ah, uh, Kuya John Vico, thumbs up, thumbs down. Ayun, thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> at Carmen, ay pero gamad dadagdag. Ano bang po? Um yun lang, uh, tama yung sinabi ni Ati Tin, medyo siguro mag-stay na mo siya mga 2 to 3 minutes or 5 minutes do sa plenary para ma, ano niya, para ma, da, ma accept niya do sa breakout room. Ayan lang po. Thank you. Ati Lilith and Ati Alcoya Pits. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Puso, puso. Kakaiba. Pero ako, may observe, eh, ako siguro pag nag-usapan nyo yan na each, each group magbibigay ng summary na pinag-usapan nila. Uh-huh. Okay. Ay, parang yung yung synthesis ni Kuya Rene is really more than enough eh na nasasummarize na niya lahat. So parang, yun, yun ang um, ano, comment ko. Uh-huh. Ang ano naman kasi dun sa, ano, sa sharing yung ano yun. Yung paglalagay ng sarili <laughs> doon sa story ah. So, dapat mong bigyan din ng uh, emphasis yun. Dahil yun ang tinatarget natin na ma-include sila doon sa istorya. Yeah, that's a good point, Kuya. Uh, hindi ko siya nakakita ang ganun. Pero it's important na I hope. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Uh, Ate Carmen, kayo po? Thumbs up po ako. Thumbs up. Ito nang wala ako. <laughs> Oo oh, nga, three times kaya ito, four times kang nadadrop. Ano? <laughs> Iniintay ka namin ni sister kanina. <laughs> Lumitaw. Lumitaw ako sister lang. Oh. So, nag-share na lang siya. 
Paborito ang pagkain ni Ate Carmen, palitaw. Lulo mo gililita. Actually, purito ko yun. Ate Dali, ano na lang po. I wish I can join na next week para ano. Okay po. Here naman ako. Kanya lang talaga. Can you pray for your fast recovery po? Thank you. Ate Marie Chris, kayo po. Tumakain niya. Amen. Thumbs up po. Bye, Kao. Okay, thumbs up. Kamera and thumbs up. Ate Baby, Kao po. Now, aside from the, ano, aside from the technical issue nga, okay naman yung, ano, yung essence at saka yung solid naman yung naging, ano, yung naging pag-uusap. Na-notice ko lang yung mga ibang break-up rooms, iba, ano, meron silang lima, pero mga, merong iba, dalawa, siguro nga dahil dun sa nalalaglag or namimisplace. Pero, yung, ano, yung, yung puso naman ng, ano, ng, ng, ano, ng topic natin ay, na, ano naman, na-handle. Opo. Marami pa pong nag-text sa akin ngayon na nagpa-text sila dahil uh, nasa biyahe, si Nati Loli, hindi na kasama. Uh, marami pa pong nag-text dito na si Nati Rosana, Medrano. Uh, yan po, may mga, mga nag, nag, nagpaalam naman sila. So sa aking isip ay kasama pa rin sila dun sa yung intention na yan. Kaya lang may naging dahilan. That's why nung pinakita ko yung groupings po, nakadistribute na sila kagad eh. Kaya lang hindi sila nakapasok. So, naging bungi-bungi naman. Right? So, sikapin na lang ati Christine siguro yung paano ma-distribute kung pulang-pulang. Okay? Uh, the good thing ay may mga bago tayo, no? May mga bagong pumasok at nag-stay hanggang sa... So, ibig sabihin, sa susunod ay mas marami pa. Mas marami tayo. The last count natin, uh, yung session 1 is 27. Then, yung last count natin ngayon is 22. So, we're missing 5 people dun sa... Okay, sige po. Wala na. Kuya? Yes, Kuya John. May, uh, kasi doon sa ano, uh, doon sa ginag... Uh, sa tingin ko lang, uh, uh, insights ko lang, para magkaroon kasi minsan yung yung PDF file na nabigay ninyo uh, baka na overwhelm sila um, basahin yon I was thinking thinking lang pero gagawin ko sa sa group namin i-divide ko into five days or six days okay lang ba huyo para every ano you know, may messenger ko na sa yung reading na doon na rin Pwedeng na, nasa stilo po ng facilitator yun kung paano nyo yung learn, yung facilitate yung learning. Uh, just oh, only uh, asking uh, for you. Sige po. Uh, uh, timplahan din po ninyo yung, ano, yung magiging resulta. Tapos uh, share na rin po ninyo sa amin kung gano'n ito ka-efektibo para kung aling makita ng ibang facilitators, baka makatulong po yan. Pero yun nakita ko ng ano, number one, thank you Ate Christine, nakabuka ng mga cell groups. Tinuha mo sila ng mga cell groups. So ang layunin nito ay for facilitators to follow up yung 90 minutes, no? minimum 90 minutes na study so ng mga participants. That's why yung permanent din yung, yung groupings. Ano? Uh, at at i-distribute pa rin natin. So ang sabi natin yan, we can come up with the more lagyan science yung pag-discipline. Then mas consciously yung yung or mas yung manner ng pag-aaral nila ay parang nag-build din ng certain habits in terms of time, no? Kuya Jan. Subukan po natin yan, Kuya Jan. Ah, ah, yun po. Ah, sa pa, baka ati ati baby yung na-miss din natin yung pagpapadala ng audio Bible? Ah, actually kasi kuya, meron akong sinet sa yung email. Ah, I was asking permission sana kung 
Uh, kasi hindi ko alam kung okay ulit this time, ganyan. I was asking permission. Pero I don't know, hindi mo yata nakita yung email ko. Kaya hindi ako nagpapagala anything. Kaya nung kunik ko yun rin kami nung nag-meeting, kaya naman tayo oh, nag-meeting. Sa so, Monday po. Monday. Na, nag-agree na po kami na okay po. O oh, kaya lang. Kasi medyo, ano, medyo busy kasi itong si Rene. Hindi niya rin nasabi sa akin. So I was all the while waiting for, ano, waiting for a uh, response from me. Yan naman pala may dahil eh. <laughs> okay. okay po, okay po yun natin. Nagkakabili uh, na po nung Monday yung tungkol doon. Oo, next, next session, next session. Okay, meron pa po ng ano, ibang sino lang kain namin. Kuya Nick? Yes, ko ate. Uh, next week po may inexpect po ako isang cup, isa cup pa po ng kapatid na aattend. May ano po? Lalaki po. Kailangan na mag-evangelize ni Ate Marie Cris. Na family, no? Oh. And, uh, hindi po may ano naman po yung mga yun. Uh, meron po kasi kaming group uh, din na uh, every weekend po nag Nag-ano rin po, nag-bible study din po. Kaya lang itong huli, medyo lalo na nag-Christmas at ano, holidays, medyo naputol po. <laughs> Yan po. Kaya Bawag po, madali din naman po silang ano, hatake. Mary Chris, yes po. ko na rin invite sa mga kapatid ko. <laughs> <laughs> Kahit ano, padala kong uh, inv- invite sa mga ano eh, dead man, dead man. <laughs> Actually, marami po akong kapatid. Yung iba, hindi pa po nag-respond. Oh. <laughs> Wala pa po. Sige po. Sige na po. Okay. Alright, meron pa? Wala na? Ati Carmen, may concern pa? Wala na? Wala na. Okay. So, yung mga kasama natin, bukas, let's see and support Kuya Rene sa General Assembly. Iboto natin. Anong kulay? Anong kulay? <laughs> So, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. So, kaya natin, let's say, all glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As the beginning, now we shall do it. Thank you po sa inyong time. Thank you po. Good night. 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 Good night.